Welcome back to my channel. I am Tara T with Old Soul Factory. I crochet here, I do vlogs, and I give you tips and tricks on how to crochet. And today we are gonna talk about a really big um, process in the crochet community called pattern testing. So pattern testing is a really important part of creating a pattern, releasing a pattern, and also getting some socials out there about your pattern in the first place. So I recently just did my pattern drop for my Ocean Chums pattern pack over here. And whenever I did this, I have a whole testing process that I have narrowed down a little bit. I don't wanna say I am perfect and I do not wanna say I know everything there is about pattern testing, but I have applied for many pattern tests, been in many pattern tests and have held many pattern tests. So I feel like I have a little bit of a leg to stand on when it comes to this. So I just wanna share everything that I know at least in case you don't know anything about it and you wanna know how to find a pattern test, you wanna know how to apply to them some tips and tricks, what the goal of it is, and just the overall process of pattern testing as a whole if you're really getting into crochet and you're new to it and you wanna try to apply to some pattern testing stuff. So without further ado, we will be hopping into it. Just ignore my exploding box of polyfill back here, okay? I made a short about it because it's a total mess, but it was a 10 pound box and I opened it and it literally exploded to twice the size. It was going to fit under my desk down here, but there is no room for it. So <laughs> it is sitting over there in the corner underneath the light switch. So just ignore that part, but otherwise we are gonna go over that. Um, and so I cannot wait to show you guys. So there's a few new things that we have made for this week back here. We made a cat, we made another one of my whale sharks and we made one of my Tice the turtle patterns as well back here, which is also a tested pattern as well. So if you are interested in those, my Etsy link is down below too. So you can also go ahead and get the patterns that I might be mentioning quite a bit today. Um, but yeah, without further ado, we'll just hop right into everything you need to know about pattern testing in the crochet community. <laughs> So the first thing I wanna talk about is just the first step of what is pattern testing. So pattern testing to me at least, is just a trial run of your pattern before you release a pattern to the public. So this can be in a private group, whether you're in Discord servers or something like that, or it can be out in public on social media and stuff, but you usually do like some kind of test or call to get people to apply, and then you pick people, you narrow it down, and then you have them um, try out this pattern early. The reason you do pattern tests is to find any and all mistakes, no matter how perfect you are. Um, there is always gonna be mistakes on a pattern that you need some people to catch, whether it, your stitch count's wrong at the end of a row, or something's not lining up for somebody else if they're using a different yarn type than what you usually use. Um, that's why usually when I pick pattern testers, I like to try to pick some different yarn types, some people who use velvet, I don't use velvet, some people who use like sweet snuggles, regular sweet snuggles, that way there's a little bit of a bigger yarn mixed into the batch, um, and then some other miscellaneous things as well. But I do like to pick a variety because this also helps you complete your pattern and perfect your pattern as well. So. So yeah, it just helps provide clarity and accuracy to your pattern before you release it out into the public for everybody to purchase or buy, or even if it's a free pattern on Instagram you're releasing, a lot of times people go ahead and do a pattern test as well on these kind of things. So that is what pattern testing is. The next thing is, is where to find pattern tests. Pattern tests are often found online in the crochet community, including Facebook groups, Rippler or Braverly groups. There's also Instagram groups. And I 100% recommend looking on Instagram first. Instagram, your followers, they're already following you for your content. They know what your style is, what your patterns look like, what kind of um, sewing skills you have, what kind of yarns you like to use, so you know that people will apply with the same kinds of yarns a lot of time. Um, I, like I said, I do like to mix it up and add in other people as well, but this also helps you um, have people who are already backing your business and your brand and everything apply to help promote your pattern test and share it and get the word out there about it because at the end of the day, it's also a little bit of a promotion um, for your business as well. So you need to take advantage of that too, which is why I highly recommend Instagram. Um, and it is just people who are already following you and supporting you and they're just really excited about you and something that you're getting ready to put out there. So I highly recommend Instagram should be the first place to go. So the pattern testing process, this is 
the heftiest little segment we'll cover really quickly. But the first thing that I want to cover is picking pattern testers. Picking pattern testers, you have to look at their qualifications. I have a very serious process to narrow down who I want to test my patterns. I have everybody apply with some very specific set rules, which I'll mention here in a minute, but I have a very set amount of rules that I want everybody to follow in order to apply for my pattern test. Um, but I do look at skill level, I look at the quality of their images, I look at um, how often they post, I look at their views usually, I look at their followers, and like I said, that doesn't always matter, but I try to cover people who have you know, under 100, under 500, under 1,000, and then like a 1,000 plus at least. And I try to pick kind of like almost four people in each of those, depending on the pattern, or even just one person in each of those, like I said, depending on the pattern. So like my Ocean Chums pattern pack that I just did, I had three different patterns in one pack, so I just picked three people for each pattern. So I had nine total testers in my uh, Instagram group that all communicated, tried these patterns. Everybody got access to all of them whenever they applied for this test though. So they had free range to make whichever ones that they wanted, but they needed to do the ones that I specifically assigned at least to provide pictures with those. And so that is a huge deal. Um, there's a lot of testing phases. The testing phases would be you actually trying to create the pattern, writing it all down, making sure you can type it up and you understand it as well, and running through it multiple times before you release um, a pattern, even to testers, in my opinion. From this point, you pick your testers from that applied. You pick your testers, you put them in a group chat, you say, here's the pattern, the final pattern that you've tried a couple times, and then they try it, and then they send back any corrections, mistakes, anything that they think you should change, any suggestions. Um, overlap on like text even and extra spaces like periods that shouldn't be there um, if you had an abbreviation that was a little weird that but it didn't say that in your pattern chart or like your abbreviations chart there's a lot of random little things that pattern testers look for and are really experienced at um, if they've done it quite a few times but also that's why I try to find some people that are experienced and some people that are newer to crochet so I can make sure that all levels of crocheters can understand my patterns before I release them as well. So once all of these creators have sent in their final adjustments to me, I make those final adjustments, I save a final copy, I send it out into the group again, I ask anybody to just like double scan it, you know, double check it for anything that they might have saw um, that might be need to, might need to be fixed or adjusted again or I missed it by chance. And then like I said, it's finished, I email it back out to them, which is how I send out my patterns in the first place. And then I upload it to my Etsy and then I can post it and publish it whenever I need to once those final adjustments are made and a triple check has been done by my testers because my testers are pretty awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to read you my set guideline rules as well in order to apply for my pattern test personally. You don't have to do all of these. I've seen creators not do all of these or they have even more rules that you need to follow. I find that this works best to both promote my pattern that I'm currently trying to get out and released and it also works well to keep track of who's applied. So I have everybody needs to have a public Instagram crochet page. Um, with this in mind it just makes it to where people can actually see your content more and are more likely to follow you for your content and everything. So you need to have a public page. There's some people who have private accounts that crochet kind of on the side um, who try to apply sometimes and I love that but you guys need to have public accounts so that creators will want to pick you. And then I also have that you need to follow me, you need to like, and you need to save the post. So whenever you follow me, I know that you're committed to this, that you'll be interested and you'll be interested in previous, or sorry, in future pattern tests as well. And then you like the post, it helps promote it as well. And then if you save it, it also helps remind you that you also applied for it and that you might have a commitment coming up or you need to maybe come back and check my Instagram page to see if you've been picked or your DMs to see if you're picked as well. So it's really helpful when you guys save our posts as well. I also have people share the post for the pattern tester call to their stories. I have them do that and you need to mention me when you do that. Whenever you mention me, it automatically tags me in those stories and it sends it to my DMs. So that's how I personally look to see if you've applied for my pattern test or not. I also double check this with the comments because the next one is you need to comment what yarn you would like to try to use for this pattern and you need to tag a couple Instagram friends. So I like to go ahead and do that as well. So I'll double check my DMs 
with my comments on my pattern test recall post. That way I can make sure that you followed all of the rules and nobody snuck through there, okay? So I do check all of these things. That's just how to apply, but a few more requirements you usually need to do in order to successfully um, complete the pattern test and everything up to like my standards usually is like these requirements. You need to be following me, of course. You need to follow or finish by a certain date. I sometimes have a really close deadline, like this last one I had tried multiple times. So it was like a three day turnaround that you had to finish this project and it only takes an hour. So I felt like that was pretty reasonable, but sometimes if you have a big pattern, um, pattern testers might have it like two weeks out. So you might have more time to complete it. Or sometimes even pattern testers are like, it needs to be due like the day that you get the pattern test because they're trying to get this pattern out really quickly for something. So you always need to make sure that you're reading through the whole description all the way down before you apply for things like that and then be able to provide feedback and final photos, um, comfortable communicating in the group chat on Instagram. Like I said, I do all of mine through the group chat. Um, this way, other creators that are trying the pattern can also comment and say, hey, you know what? Row 11, which might have happened on my last pattern, looks a little off, so you need to fix that before you send it off. That way, anybody else that got the pattern can just scroll through those, read any notes really quickly and be like, oh yeah, row 11 does look weird. Okay, I know to skip it now without, you know, getting a new pattern out to anybody or anything like that. So that is great for communicating and it always needs to be on the table. Like you always need to be willing to communicate in group chats because that's how most Instagram tester calls work. And then you also need to be able to share your plushie on your social medias. So I have it just where you need to be able to share it on at least Instagram since that's where you've applied and I know that you have it. You can always feel free to post it on any of your other socials and stuff. That's just an extra bonus. I know that I remember those things when it comes next time to pick out testers for the next call for that. Um, but you need to be able to do them on your socials and you need to be able to tag me that way I can share them because I love it when people um, make my plushies and then I can share them on my stories too to also help promote you guys and your communities that you're also trying to build. So that's really important to me too. So always make sure that you're sharing them after especially and tagging me whenever you do this. It's not necessarily a requirement to tag me or anything like that. But like I said, I do like to promote you guys and that's the best way for me to find your content to repost it to my story or share it again or make a reel out of it or something fun to react to it or at least comment on it and let you know that I really enjoyed working with you and I really enjoyed what you created with this pattern test. The next thing I want to talk about is the challenges and the considerations that you need to take into place or take into your mind whenever you're thinking about applying for these pattern tests. I think that it is a fantastic tool to get the perfect polished pattern. I can't tell you how many times, especially on this last one, I was like, I did good this time. And then I turned around and they literally on my pattern test, they're like row 11 and row 12 are the same exact thing. And the stitch count does not line up and it's going to throw everything off. And I was like, oh crap, I forgot to take off row 11. <laughs> I accidentally put it on there twice. So I had to take it off completely, but my pattern testers caught that. Luckily they did. If I would have just posted it on Insta or on Etsy, then we would have had some issues and some people complaining. And I never want that to happen and I want people to get what they paid for. So I'm very glad that I do that and can be able to provide a very polished pattern thanks to these pattern testers. Cause like I said, I miss things, I'm only human. So I'm really glad that I have these pattern testers to help me through this process. I think that this process, one of the challenges is balancing both like the criticism and the encouragement that are provided to you in this process. Like I said, nobody's trying to tear you down whenever they tell you that something needs to be changed or fixed on a pattern or anything like that. They're just trying to help you come up with the best pattern possible for your business and your brand. So you really have to take that in mind. Don't take anything personally if you hold a pattern test and people are like, hey, you did this, this, and this wrong because I, every single time I've had somebody come back with a whole list of like, you had an extra space here. This was a little extra. I don't know why this was in here and it's totally fine. And that's why, like I said, that's why we do pattern tests. So it's not a problem at all. You also need to balance that with the encouragement. Don't get overinflated if everybody's like, oh my gosh, this is the best pattern in the world. Um, oftentimes if that happens, I find myself like checking Etsy more often, like after it releases. And then sometimes they don't sell a whole lot and that's totally fine. And there's nothing wrong with it as long as people are getting what they want. Um, but you don't want to get overinflated with that either. And you always want to be encouraging also to your testers, not just back to you. So always encourage them, be active in your group chats that you're hosting for these pattern tests. 
um, encourage them, share their content, hype them up, um, answer any questions possible that they might have. Um, and like I said, balance the criticism that they might be coming at you with and the encouragement, but also provide that back to them in case like, like I, when I did my pattern tester thing, um, somebody left the fin off the top of the whale shark that was in the pattern pack. And I was like, hey, <laughs> don't forget to go back and add that. <laughs> I think another big challenge, like I said, I like to include all different kinds of skill levels and um, all different types of skill levels and account sizes and just different age groups too as well. I try to be as diverse as possible whenever I'm selecting all of my testers for my pattern groups because I wanna make sure that any skill level can be able to do this pattern and do it efficiently. So I think that's another big challenge is sometimes you do have to explain some things that seem like they're common sense to us because we've been doing this for a while, um, but they're just new to it. And so you just have to have a little extra patience sometimes, which is totally fine. I love helping people out like that and helping them grow as well um, and grow through the pattern too that I've created. So that's always really fun to do. So it is a challenge though that you need to always keep in the back of your head. Like if somebody asked me a question about this, am I gonna be able to answer it? Cause you should be able to answer it. <laughs> Another one of the big challenges or considerations that you need to keep in mind is just the time and the commitment that's required to finish these pattern tests. Not just for you, but for your pattern testers, as I mentioned, always read through the whole description and see when the deadline's gonna be to make sure that you can efficiently meet that for whoever the creator is that's hosting the pattern tester call. I also have to take into consideration how fast I can turn the pattern around after I've completed a pattern test as well. Sometimes it takes a lot longer if there's a lot more pages or patterns or if it's a pattern pack this time, I probably should have stretched that out a little bit longer because it did take a lot of extra time on the side that took away from actually crocheting. Um, but it did get the pattern out and released, which is what I wanted to share with everybody. And I'm so glad that I got it done, but always be conscious of that as well whenever you're doing pattern tests. And then the last section that we have today is just some helpful tips about pattern testing, what can help you get into pattern tests and what can help you be a better pattern tester for the creator as well. Throughout this process, you should always remember to have effective communication. As a designer, you need to be able to respond to everybody in the group chat as efficiently as possible. And if you're going to bed or you're going to work, I always like to kind of send a message out if I have a lot of pattern testing stuff going on, be like, hey, just, you know, I'm gonna be a little MIA, but I promise I'll respond to you tonight. Or you can go ahead and you can send the message in the group chat and somebody else might be able to answer you as well. So make sure that you're efficiently communicating and as well when you're going to submit like your actual like critiques that you had for the pattern make sure you list them out very like clearly make sure you line them all up it's helpful to provide like page numbers even sometimes or like what section this might have been in like be as specific as possible when it comes to that kind of stuff because it really helps the creator when they go back to the pattern to actually edit it to be like oh they said at the bottom of page four that there was a random text box and then you can just go back there really quickly delete it and it's so much easier than looking through the whole pattern for that kind of stuff so make sure that you're being as specific and communicating as much as possible about your critiques Another tip would be working on your skills throughout the pattern testing process. If you're new to crochet and you get into a pattern test, don't be afraid, okay? I was too when I first got into one, but just remember if you don't understand something or there ends up being a stitch that you don't know and you've tried to look it up and you just don't know how, feel free to reach out via the group chat, okay? There are so many awesome creators in your group chat, I'm sure, or the creator themselves will be very willing to help you understand their pattern, their process, and all of these things as well, so that you can efficiently provide a great pattern feedback for them. So really focus on your skills. Don't try to like half do anything. If you do need help, just reach out because people love to help other people in this community. And that's what I love about it. So always keep that in mind too, that don't be afraid to ask for help about your skill set. With this in mind, it really does help you build your own relationships inside the crochet community. I know that I've gained quite a few followers and friends throughout this whole process of all of the pattern tests that I've done in the past. And it always helps my account grow just a little bit. And it makes me feel so happy when all of my little followers are just like commenting away on like a pattern release post or they're swiping up on my story and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for you to release this and stuff. And most of the time it's people who have entered in previous pattern tests or really like your content and stuff like that. So always keep that in mind too, that you're building relationships throughout this process. And that's another great way to build your account and build your brand and stuff as well throughout this process. 
So that is all I have for pattern testing today in the crochet community. I really hope that this helped kind of explain the process of pattern testing if you're new to it, whether you're gonna host your first pattern test or you're gonna apply for some more pattern tests, whichever one it is, I wish you all the best of luck. It is such a fun process. I wouldn't trade it for anything and I love hosting them over on my Instagram as well. You can go follow me. All my socials are down below if you're interested in applying for the next ones because I have some in mind that I am working on currently for some more patterns but feel free to go over there as well my mom old soul or i'm old soul factory but my mom stacy makes um apple tree underscore stacy makes on instagram she also hosts pattern tests as well that you can go ahead and apply for too she's also here on youtube as stacy makes and she does release a lot of patterns she has more patterns than me in her etsy you should go check her out too and just look through her stuff as well so if you need anything else i you guys know where to find me i'll be here if you have any questions comment them down below i'd be happy to help you guys so i will see you guys next time and if you need me you know where to find me bye <laughs> Thank you.